Welcome back to Pattern. Now, far out in the Pacific Ocean between Hawaii and the Philippines is a sprawling chain of volcanic islands. The Marshall Islands are home to about 42,000 people, and they're all bearing witness to the impacts of climate change. In fact, the islands could be swallowed by rising sea levels in just 30 to 40 years. Jennifer Broom is a meteorologist and travel joining us. Joining us now live from the islands how lucky is she and how lucky are we to live vicariously through you jennifer marshall islands well i have to say go ahead i'm i'm living in the future it's friday morning here oh that is oh, wild wow. <laughs> all right good morning and thank you for waking up early for us here the marshall islands one of the world's most vulnerable to climate change what impacts are already being seen there you know, it's been really interesting when you come to a place like the Marshall Islands. Uh, there has been, of course, some publicity, as you guys just said, that they will be submerged potentially in the next 30 to 40 years. The reality is, is that they could become uninhabited, uninhabitable before then. That's what happens first before they disappear into the water. Some of the things they're seeing, I had a really long conversation with the one meteorologist in the Marshall Islands, and in the past 30 years, they have seen a sea rise level of six to eight inches. While you may they think at home, well, that doesn't sound like a whole lot. When you live at sea level, that's tremendous, especially when you're dealing with things like the king tides when they come in, just the plain ocean inundations that come in that are now going in a foot higher than normal. Something I've seen this week, the rain rates are incredibly heavy. It's not just, as we call those, those tropical downpours. I mean, they are just deluges that come very quickly. And that's something they're seeing here. Plus, just talking to the locals, they say, you know, we always used to have a breeze, used to have comfortable temperatures, but now they actually use the term hot, that it feels hot here. And it's not just that, guys. It's stuff like their water supply. You have seawater really infiltrating into their groundwater systems here, which makes it undrinkable and usable for them. And that's a big issue. A lot of folks don't necessarily realize part of climate change is also those health aspects of potentially affecting your water systems, too. So let's talk about that because you're part of a volunteer project that's helping deliver mm -hmm. clean water to the islands. How does the Clean Water for All initiative, how is that working? So it's really interesting, guys. It is an organization, a woman-led organization, all women, and it's called Kio locally, but it's Cora in Okirani. And they reached out to a U.S. company, Sawyer, to get these. These are life saving water filters. They attach these to a bucket. They started, which is something that's really unique. They started with the most vulnerable. In the Marshall Islands, there are 12,000 or 12, uh, 1,200 islands. And within those, so yeah, some of them do not have people living on them, but the outer islands have 22 islands where you do have people living on them. In addition to where I am, uh, the largest city in the Marshall Islands. So they started from the outer islands coming in, going to those super remote villages, Milking, making them self-sustainable. What they do here is they use catchments. They basically use like a cistern, if you know what a cistern is uh, back in the United States. They catch the rainwater. They're able to take that rainwater, which potentially falls on roofs where you may have birds or cats or any other kind of wildlife that does get on top of that um, and potentially contaminates the water. They're able to catch, catch that rainwater and then put it into a bucket with that filter. And then with that filter, they're able to get very clean water. So it's such a unique thing to start with a nonprofit organization reaching out to a business, but then also partnering with some of the worldwide organizations that you know, uh, you know World Health Organization, UNICEF, the government here, all of these entities coming together to start with the most vulnerable and it finished this week it was so cool to be in a village and watch people and I, I honestly I get very emotional about it because we in the United States have easy access to clean water you know here they don't and to see something that's life-changing and to see in particular how interesting these children they were enthralled with it knowing that this is the difference for them that these children won't necessarily know what life is like only having to drink water out of a plastic bottle. So in addition to providing the water supply, it's also helping to reduce plastic in the area as well. Wow, really good stuff there. Yeah. Jennifer Broom, travel journalist and meteorologist. Thank you so much for joining us this Friday morning um, there in the Marshall <laughs> Islands. That's really cool.